Now, because this piece came out of a ZL11 LE, the stitching here is red. It's very thin, it'd probably still be hard to notice, and most people wouldn't catch it, but I'd rather not have it. So, I've got this Uchida fabric marker. It's a black marker. I'm going to go ahead and just dab every one of these with this marker and make them black. And you notice I've laid some tape on either side of this, fine detail tape, just to make sure I don't mistakenly bleed over onto the suede. But I'm basically going to go stitch by stitch and just dab these black. And doing this, it's actually so easy that the tape is actually just distracting. So I'm going to take the tape off because I was worried that I would bleed over onto the edges, but this is a really fine tip. Makes it very easy to not screw it up. Of course, if I wanted to be fancy, I could take this apart and restitch it, but I'm not going to do that. What I'll probably do is I'll do this, let it dry, come back tomorrow, give it some more love with this marker. Better you just kind of poke it. You'll make less mess onto the surrounding area, it looks like. I'll just keep doing that and make it all black. Alright, so it's the next day. I've allowed this stuff to dry overnight. Then I just came right now and gave it another coat. I found that as it dries, it kind of darkens the stitching up even more. And giving it another coat today made it even blacker because there were some spots where they were still kind of reddish showing through. But now it's pretty much all the way there. You'd have to look really, really close to notice any tiny speck of red. Like you'd have to have your eye an inch from it. Um, I might let it dry. Um, longer and then come back and do yet a third coat. One good thing I did notice is that if you do happen to bleed onto the Alcantara with the marker, once it dries up, it's pretty much invisible. It doesn't really leave like uh, any kind of marking there. So that's a very good thing to know because it, that way you don't have to stress or be overly careful when you do this. So I'm just gonna let this thing do its its thing, dry out. I'll come back later, give it another coat, and then we're gonna go ahead and put it in the car. All right, so I've officially blacked out the stitching on this. I'm more than happy with the way it looks, which means that it's time to install it in the car. So let's get to that. I will be missing this contrasting stitching, but all the same, I can live without it. Right, so first things first, we gotta pop off this little piece of trim. So let's go ahead and do that. I would think, some kind of plastic, you know, flexible tool would be the best bet there uh, to kind of help pry that off. Something thin and metal like this just won't do any damage. Yeah. There we go. So looks like there's two little clips there, but I just kind of popped this in here and went like that. And that's that, it came out. Let's put this up here so we don't lose it. Okay, having done that, 
we need to remove a couple of the screws that are in there. Um, they're size seven millimeter. It's one on this side, one on this side, right? You see these kind of little pockets. Yes, my interior is quite dusty. It's in need of a clean. So, okay. Got the first one here. These aren't on very tight, like basically hand tight is what that felt like. One. I'm just putting these things up on top of the dash or down on my weather tech mat probably better so I don't lose it. Alright. So knowing that these were only on finger tight, I'm gonna make sure that I reinstall them finger tight. That is I will not turn these with the wrench. overdo it on stuff like that and it's kind of hard to get out so luckily I've got this little electronics uh, kit I bought for something I did on a cell phone but got a bunch of little neat things I can use in situations like these It's like a little kit I bought on Amazon with a bunch of stuff for working on phones. Okay, now, having removed that, I can go ahead and pry off the radio. I do believe the radio face, if you will, is like clipped on. Ah, not even. Once I did that, it just kind of slid out, but there are some clips on top, so it kind of hooks in here. Um, with this down and out of the way, I can now access for that thing. So as you can see, there's a little bolt here. Let's try to take that out. Also hand tight. Good to keep that stuff in mind. You don't want to over tighten stuff on plastics risk cracking them and such. So if something is hand tight, make sure you put it back that way. And I want to say this is the same as the screws holding in the radio. It is. But I still like to keep them in order because I'm just OCD like that. It would drive me insane if I altered that. So, Okay, now from looking at the back of my new piece, right? I can tell where the clips are. So there's nine clips, right? Four, six, eight, nine. And this obviously goes like that. That bolt was the only bolt that goes on there. The rest of this is just basically clipped in place. So I gotta kind of reach behind that and just start popping clips. So. Easier said than done this stuff. There we go. I like to be gentle on stuff like this because I'm always afraid I'm gonna break it. Um, there we go. So, all right, there's one past the AC vent which probably makes it a little harder, but there we go. That's that, so now this thing is off. Now, my new piece did come with an AC vent. I could have left it on, but I don't know, I had some weird thoughts about maybe some odd dust from that car was in there, I don't know. Um, um, again, I have some serious OCD, so I'm just gonna transfer mine. There's these little clips around it that kinda hold it into place. So if you kinda get two of them on top loose at the same time, kinda just press them down. And then try to apply some pressure at the end of it. All right, you should be able to get it out. It's annoying because of the type of clips that want to pop back in as you do this. 
but it's whatever. You just mess with it until it'll kind of gives. Might mess up your fingers a bit. Okay, let's try this. Got one here. I'm gonna apply pressure to this one. Let's see if I can slide it forward. Maybe this is this one a little harder to get out. Okay, I'll get that one loose first. Then attack this one. Ah, God. This is fighting me quite a bit. That means it's time for a tool. Alright, so. Get one of my little tools here. Just kind of pop that down. Okay, that one's through. While I apply pressure. Ah, pop back in. Stupid thing. I hate designs like this. There we go, got two of them through. Then pop this other one. And the last one should be cake. And that's that, AC vents out. Get the old piece out of the way. Bring my new piece over here. All right, AC vent can only go back on one way, like that. There's like uh, these little grooves here that will show you how it goes, but the angle also kind of makes it pretty obvious. All right, so let it go here and here, and pop this guy in. That's not going anywhere. It's nice and firm. Let's go ahead and put this guy on. Kind of just align my clips here. gently pop it in place there we go I think uh, is there anything else to do let's give this a brushing and clean it later but let's put that bolt back in like I said hand tight It's nice and tight, it's not going anywhere. Then we'll take our radio, right? Remember it has these hooks on top, so you wanna bring it up at an angle, right? And then kind of drop it into place. So that's back on. Pop a bolt on here. Now, just, like I said, hand tight. Make sure this thing's all the way down. Alright, before I tighten that too much, I'll do the other one. Make sure it's, again, it's all the way down. That pole is also straight shot. So, kind of... Come in here. Ugh, wanted to avoid that. Now it's in there at an angle and I've got it right out. But that's okay. Got it. It's like a little tab that... <laughs> I'm pretty sure if I were sitting on the other side of the car, this would be a lot more straightforward. There we go. Just gotta make sure not to like knock this little here 
because it will knock the screw out. Obviously, if you have a magnet on the end of this, like if I had stuck a magnet here, it would have made this much easier. Just keep that in mind. If you have a spare magnet lying around, probably a good idea. All right, that's as tight as it's gonna go. Get this one down. Tight as it's gonna go. Okay. Again, hand tight, nothing fancy. All right, so with that done, we go ahead and pop this guy back on. So, I guess I just have to kind of line it here. Hold on. Get the clips. There we go. Uh, this is not playing ball with me right now. There we go. Okay, so kind of bring your thumbs from here and pop it down and it'll come on nicely. Again, being really gentle with this stuff because I hate breaking interior plastics in a car and then having dashboard rattles and things like that. So looking at the original piece, I've always felt that this leather felt really plasticky and artificial. And I was 100% right in that assessment. As you can see from the backing, this is just some kind of vinyl coating on some woven backing. This is not leather at all. It always felt like rubbery, unlike, you know, like the leather on the seats and other surfaces. It just feels like actual leather. So I'm glad to have replaced that with a nice Alcantara piece, which feels nice and soft. All right, so I'm done with that. Two very simple mods to my car's interior over the last you know, a week or so, nothing ultra fancy, but I'm really happy with this. It just makes the interior feel nicer, look nicer. It, it just gave it the perfect touch that it was missing. So I'm really happy to have upholstered those knee pads and switched to the new Alcantara or microfiber as it were, dash pad, just. It all matches so nice. It makes my interior look better. So I'm happy with that. If you guys have enjoyed this video, feel free to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you're notified when I post up another one. If you have any feedback, feel free to leave that in the comment section, any questions you might have. As always, thank you guys for watching.